The role of the government is supposed to be to oversee the role of the people and the role of corporations, and yet today it seems like corporations have more power than they're supposed to uh, have or were originally given. Could you explain that to us, Field? I can certainly try. I think originally, uh, if we go back a couple hundred years, companies became corporations and corporations competed with each other. And lately, and I'd say specifically in the last 30 years under what has been called deregulation, corporate power has been focused in fewer and fewer entities so that the corporations are vastly more powerful than the individuals and they dictate to the government, it would appear, policy that should be the policy of the uh, elected officials speaking on behalf of their constituents across this country of ours. So with this going on, um, and a, a, a sort of a basic loss of power for, or a loss of duty for the uh, elected officials, what is that developing in our country? What's happening to our country because of this corporate power? It appears to me that corporations are becoming ever more powerful and the, uh, the will and the benefits to the individual citizens of this country are being brokered through K Street uh, persons who uh, have generally come either from a legal or a political background and then they become lobbyists for the major corporations and the major corporations have gotten bigger and bigger through consolidation. I would think of primer to start to understand this would to be look at the deregulation of the airline industry beginning in 1978 where we went from about 40 airlines down to about five today and you can see a concentration of power that is in the best interest of the corporate body, but not we the people. So there's these ent entities called lobbyists that seem to be the in-betweens between the corporations and the government. Could you explain the role of the lobbyists? Lobbyists are paid mouthpieces who try to forward an agenda which is typically favorable to corporate America as opposed to being favorable to we the people and many of these lobbyists come from a political background where they may have been congressmen or senators and after losing an election or deciding to step out of politics they've moved across the street and specifically that's k street northwest in washington where all the lobbyists uh, try to convince those in elected office to do things in favor of their corporate uh, interest, whether those corporate interests might be Boeing, General Electric, or British Aerospace uh, Systems, for example. I'll just speak from my own experience. Uh, the state of North Dakota had a senator uh, who, when he lost his election in the early 80s, went directly from being a senator uh, to being a lobbyist. And ostensibly, the reason is, is because a lobbyist and an ex-senator would be familiar with the workings of the United States of America's government. So, Field, with the structure that you just explained, where is the line drawn uh, for what is good for the people and what is good for the corporations, if there is, in fact, any line to be drawn? The line that should be drawn between the interest of the corporations and the interest of we the people has been blurred over the last 40 years and has gone almost full travel over to the side of the benefits of the corporations over we the people of the United States of America, some 300 million uh, commoners. And uh, this has been done through deregulation, through the manipulation of our elected officials, both in the Congress and the Senate, at the hands of lobbyists, who are very highly paid uh, persons and houses on K Street in Northwest Washington, D.C., who actually control, manipulate, or vastly over-influence the actions of our elected people, be they congressmen or senators. It appears over the last so many years that the, uh, in the interest of the major corporations have been placed well ahead of the benefit and the welfare of we the people, and especially families in this country. And it's been done through a myriad of avenues, but one that we can all embrace as something that we go through ritually three times a day is the food, and the processed food in the United States of America, which does contain in it some things that are not helpful for our bodies, for our families, and for our future.
fasten your seat belts. to cut through some of the spin. Define for me what you think Kerry's weakest moment was tonight. What do you think specifically he did tonight to provide those answers and to provide some hope? Okay, real quick, his toughest moment though was when he was challenged on the 87 billion and he said, I made a mistake in how I talked about the war. Right. And I thought the president was very articulate and very clear. Stark difference between him and John Kerry. In the defense industry, there's actually a direct relationship between campaign contributions and government contracts awarded. Shortly after the Civil War, corporations began using the newly enacted 14th Amendment in court and successfully established that they too should have personhood rights. They argued that the differing amounts of taxes in different counties constituted unequal treatment. Building on cases that developed the idea of corporate personhood, in 1976 the Supreme Court drastically changed the framework of campaign finance. They overruled the Federal Election Campaign Act, believing that limits on campaign spending were unconstitutional, allowing money from potential corporate government contractors to begin financing election campaigns. While it goes against the belief that Americans don't pay as much in taxes, since 1953, corporations pay a smaller percentage of taxes into the federal government, while individuals pay a larger share. U.S. legislation increasingly protects corporate interests. While the other democratic governments negotiate for their population's behalf, our representatives gave away that right. In order to accomplish this, Pfizer alone spent more than six million dollars in reported funds to lobby and contact both representatives and senators, enough to pass legislation in their favor. Question number seven. Is it fair that corporate lobbyists can create laws and influence representatives after the people have voted them into office? Because of the close relationships that corporate lobbies build with government officials, the U.S. has an increasing phenomenon known as the revolving door, where a person goes from the corporate world into the government, or from the government to the corporate world. Since 1998, 43% of departing congressional representatives, both Democrats and Republicans, go to work for lobby firms. Some are made up entirely of former members of Congress. 
They lobby our policy and our lawmaking process for any individual that can front for any corporation or any country that pays them.